So for the past year, Ant or Aragon has been on a uptrend and the price is looking pretty good. It's starting to recover from its previous lows. So yeah, for the past year, it's been on a steady uptrend and also the amount of holders in the past year has been on a steady uptrend as well. We can see that here in orange, we can see the amount of token holders that have increased from, let's just say back in uh, September, 2022, there was around 30,000 holders to where it is now at 32,000 holders of Ant. So today I'm gonna be explaining everything you need to know about Ant, some of the features, some of the pros, and also some of the cons, so some of the things that I don't like uh, about it as well and what I don't like about DAOs. So if you guys are new here, my name is Trevor, also known as Minted Max, and I do my analysis on different cryptos and also talk about the news about everything related to crypto. So today it's gonna be Aragon, let's get started. So Aragon is a cryptocurrency project that aims to provide a platform for creating and also managing decentralized autonomous organizations or DAOs on the Ethereum blockchain. So the project aims to empower individuals and communities to build and govern their organizations without the need for traditional intermediaries or centralized authorities. And it offers tools and infrastructure to enable individuals and groups to govern and operate their organizations transparently and decentralized. So Argon was founded in 2016 by Luis Quende and also George, or I believe this is pronounced Jorge, uh, is Cuerdo. And the project conducts an initial coin offering or ICO in May of 2017 to raise funds for development and also has been actively working on its platform since then. Now let's talk about some of the tokenomics. So the token is ANT or A-N-T and this is the native utility token for the Argon platform. And at launch the maximum supply that was set was at 43,166,000 ANT. So now let's talk about uh, some of the other roles that ANT has in the ecosystem. So for First of all, we have governance. So ant holders have voting rights and also can participate in the Argon ecosystem's decision-making process for proposals and also protocol upgrades. And then there's also network fees. So ant is used to pay transaction fees and other network related costs within the Argon platform. And then there's also revenue distribution. So a portion of the revenue generated by the Argon network is distributed to ant holders as a reward for their participation and also contribution to the network. And then there's also staking and rewards. So ant holders can stake their tokens to secure the network and earn additional tokens as staking rewards. So how does Argon work? Well, when it comes to how Argon works, the system is straightforward. Argon works by providing a framework called Argon OS for creating decentralized autonomous organizations or DAOs. So developers utilize Argon OS to build DAOs with various models and also features. So to start, developers can use Argon OS models to raise funds, incentivize contributors, and facilitate group decision-making within the DAO. These modules enable users to manage the organization's resources, handle crypto assets for membership and organizational structure, and also implement voting mechanisms for token holders to raise issues and cast votes. In addition, developers can integrate the agent app into their DAO, allowing direct interaction with smart contracts on the Ethereum blockchain. And this integration enables organizations to perform actions and execute transactions on Ethereum seamlessly. And then furthermore, Argon also promotes an open ecosystem where anyone can develop applications for their organization or share them with others. And this approach encourages innovation and customization within the Argon DAO ecosystem. So the platform also comes with Argon Court, a service for resolving disputes in Argon network organizations that smart contracts cannot resolve. Users known as jurors uh, review arguments and also vote on the conflicts. Jurors stake ANJ tokens obtained by exchanging ANT coins to increase their chances of being selected. And once resolved, jurors also receive receive ANT coin rewards and the software updates accordingly. Now let's talk about the use cases of Argon. So Argon aims to address a significant barrier to corporate adoption, which is the scarcity of affordable blockchain professionals. Traditional corporations often face high costs and inefficiencies. Argon seeks to mitigate these challenges by leveraging programmable DAOs or decentralized autonomous organizations. By utilizing DAOs, Argon aims to reduce overhead costs and also enhance overall business 
efficiency. Okay, so now let's talk about the main components of the Argon blockchain. So first of all, we have Argon Court. So this is a dispute resolution service that allows DAOs to resolve disputes that cannot be handled by smart contracts alone. Then we also have the Argon App Center, which is a marketplace where users can discover and install various decentralized applications or dApps or modules to enhance the functionality of their DAOs. These apps can range from finance and voting modules to specialized tools for specific use cases. Then there's also the Argon User Interface or Argon UI. This allows users to interact with and also manage their DAOs. So it provides an intuitive dashboard for accessing and controlling various features, making it easier for users to navigate and also utilize the Argon ecosystem. Then there's Argon Agent. This is a tool that allows DAOs to interact with smart contracts on the Ethereum blockchain. And it also enables seamless integration and execution of transactions, enhancing the functionality and automation of DAO operations. Then there's Argon Client, a toolkit which is designed for developers to build customizable online operations, prioritizing transparent group participation. Now let's talk about the pros and cons of Argon. And we're first gonna start with the pros. First of all, we have customizability. So Argon provides developers with a toolkit to create customizable online operations and organizations tailored to their needs. And this flexibility allows for the creation of unique decentralized applications. Then there's also accessibility. So Argon aims to make blockchain technology more accessible by offering user-friendly interfaces and also tools. It simplifies creating and managing decentralized organizations, making it easier for non-technical users to participate in the ecosystem. Then there's also cost efficiency. So Argon aims to reduce overhead costs associated with running traditional organizations. And it also offers programmable smart contracts and automation capabilities, streamlining administrative processes, and also potentially lowering operational costs and expenses. Now let's talk about the cons. So first of all, there is scalability. So like many blockchain-based platforms, scalability can concern Argon. As more organizations adopt the network and the the number of transactions increases, scalability issues may arise, potentially impacting the user experience and efficiency of the platform. Then there's also limited adoption. So despite its potential, Argon adoption is still relatively limited compared to traditional organizational uh, structures. Overcoming the barrier of mainstream adoption and gaining widespread recognition may require more time and effort. And then there's also the issue with DAOs, which I'm going to talk about here in a minute. But first, let's talk about some of the updates for Argon. So Argon has been progressing steadily on its roadmap, consistently delivering updates and also improvements. And one notable recent uh, update, which not really that recent, uh, was on the Argon stack on the mainnet in March of 2023. And this new stack brings a powerful tool for building organizations on the blockchain, allowing users to explore and experiment with governance quickly and also efficiently. Now, when it comes to competition for other you know projects that are doing something similar we have one called genosis this is ranked at 100 when we're taking a look at the market cap meanwhile argon is ranked at 155 when we're taking a look at the ranking of the market cap at 157 million and then we have genosis at 100 and it has a 298 uh, 297 million dollar market cap. Now, what is Genosis? Well, Genosis is a decentralized prediction market, a platform that also supports the creation of DAOs, and it allows users to create and trade prediction markets and make decentralized decisions through the use of its token, which is GNO. Then there is also MakerDAO. MakerDAO is a project that I've been really bullish on, and it's a decentralized autonomous organization that operates uh, the DAI stablecoin system on the Ethereum blockchain. So MKR is the MakerDAO token, uh, uh, for the ecosystem, and it also enables holders to participate in the decision-making processes. Now, when it comes to DAOs itself and my problem with them, many decentralized autonomous organizations or DAOs today do not fully embody the principles of decentralization and also autonomy. So instead, they often resemble unregulated corporations that are less efficient in their operations. Now, merely introducing a governance token that grants voting power within the organization and allowing it to be traded on the open market does not automatically make the organization decentralized or autonomous. It essentially transforms the governance token into a type of stock share and the organization becomes an unregulated corporate entity. So to truly achieve decentralization and autonomy, every proposal 
uh, that undergoes voting must be expressible in code. So the functions of the proposal should be audible and verifiable independently and transparently by the community before the voting processes begin. Once the voting concludes, the execution of the proposal should occur automatically on the blockchain. And the only human involvement in this process should be limited to the initial proposal, the community's auditing of the smart contract, and the voting itself. All other aspects should be governed uh, by the code embedded in the smart contract. If these conditions are not met, then the organization really cannot be considered a genuine DAO. It simply becomes an organization within an elaborate voting system that essentially functions no differently from traditional corporate uh, stock shares. And this poses a problem because it aligns with the reasons why regulatory bodies like the SEC are looking to tighten their oversight of DeFi um, in general. Now, in a true DAO, the code is not just a set of rules, but the very foundation on which the organization operates. The notion of code is law goes beyond the idea that rules can be broken and it implies that the code itself cannot be broken. So a DAO cannot violate its own code any more than a human can instruct their red blood cells to cease carrying oxygen. So the code is inseparable from the functioning of the DAO, ensuring its integrity and autonomy. So that's my one problem with DAOs. Uh, there's a couple of different coins and projects that are you know, related to DAOs and stuff, just like Ant that I, I like. But I do have a problem with DAOs and that's it. So if we were to compare Ant with, for example, GNO, another project somewhat similar to it, then Ant, the price of Ant would go up to 7.39. Let's just say if Ant had the same exact market cap as of GNO, then the price of Ant would be at $7.39 and it would be a 1.88. X. And then let's just say it had the same market cap of that, of, for example, Maker uh, or MKR, then the price would go up to $15.30 or an upside of 3.89X. Now, when we're taking a look at the general price, we can see that it has been on a steady incline for the past year, which is pretty great. Um, and the all-time high was at $13 previously. So it's down 10, you know, close to $10 since then because it's trading at around $3.90 right now. So let me know where you guys think Ant or Argon project itself is going to go in the future and let me know your thoughts about it. Are you bullish? Or are you bearish? Let me know. Poke a hole in my thesis as well. Uh, I'm definitely bullish on the project. It's been, it's kind of an older project actually if you compare it to other projects, right? Um, but let me know your thoughts about it in the comments down below. Anyways, guys, that's all I have for this one. My name is Trevor. If you liked the video, do me a favor by minting me a subscription down below, and we'll see you in the next one.